Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sonny expressed his continued rage at Michael for hiring Dex to assist in sending him to prison at Volanino's gym. Despite Dante's attempts to defuse the situation, Sonny persisted that he could no longer trust Michael. Sonny lost his cool when Dant mentioned that Michael wanted to make sure he was all right. Judas does not have the right to know anything about me or my life. Saying such, Sonny inquired as to Dant's allegiance. When Dant implied that Sonny would eventually have to treat Michael with civility, Sonny objected. As Michael got ready to go, he told Sonny to be careful. You do not get to say that to me, Sonny stated adamantly. Michael expressed his desire to prevent Sonny from doing anything he would later regret. John came in just as Michael turned to go. John and Sonny made eye contact. John was questioned by Sonny for going to Bobby's diner earlier to get information from Carly. John casually stated that if it meant shielding Sonny from the guy who was aiming for Sonny, he would keep conversing with everyone in Sonny's life. I'll speak with whoever and whenever I please. And there's nothing you can do to stop me until you get jurisdiction over the FBI or just pass away from embarrassment, John declared. Karen was called Carrie, an insult from Sonny, who also mentioned that it was her birthday. Sonny moved closer to John, accusing him of abandoning Stone when Stone most needed his brother. You failed to look after him. Your brother was not taken care of by you. You also detest the oxygen I inhale. You didn't care that I sat with him, holding his hand and listening to his anxieties, while you went out and lived your best life with Karen. You then betrayed her. You were divorced by her. Sonny exclaimed loudly, You're not just a bad husband, you're a bad brother, with excitement. Sonny moved aside to avoid the blow that John threw at him. To keep Sonny and John apart, Dante and Michael moved in between them. Later, Sonny admitted to Dante that he had been attempting to get John to hit Sonny in an attempt to get John taken out of the FBI's case. When Dante claimed that John and the FBI merely intended to assist Sonny, Sonny disagreed. Sonny expressed his lack of trust in John and that Dante should also have doubts. Dan declared that he would not apologize for stopping Sonny from fighting John, while the two of them sparred in the boxing ring. What do you know? What is going to happen will happen. You're going to find out the truth about Jagger Cates sooner or later, Sonny informed Dante. Dex insisted from Rockland, New York, that he had no choice but to avoid poor Charles. Jocelyn asserted that Carly and Michael wouldn't consent to Sonny getting rid of Dex. Dex contended that Sonny's appearance of weakness to his adversaries would endanger Jocelyn and her family. Dex that he loved and cared for Jocelyn, which was why he was deciding not to go to poor Charles. Jocelyn was assured by Dex that she will complete her education, become an amazing doctor, and save lives. Jocelyn had to let Dex go, according to Dex. Jocelyn got a call from Michael at Volanino's gym a little while later. Jocelyn was asked by Michael to locate Dex and return him to poor Charles. Jocelyn informed Dex at the end of the call that she thought Sonny was in danger and that Sonny needed Dex. When Brooke Lynn brought up the prenup, Chase confronted her in the Quartermain home. According to Brooke Lynn, Tracy was attempting to uphold her rights. Chase acknowledged that he had a sneaking suspicion that he and Brooke Lynn might not last. He also mentioned that his brief union with Willow in 2021 had not gone well. According to Brooke Lynn, there was no way to compare the two. She went on to say that she had never loved somebody as much as she did Chase. Chase affirmed that he was excited to marry Brooke Lynn and that he felt the same way. Before he signed the prenuptial agreement, Chase and Brooke Lynn made their love known. Chase was jokingly reprimanded by Brooke Lynn for not reading the agreement before signing it. We started talking about wedding dresses. When Brooke Lynn opened up, she said she hoped Tracy would let her wear Leela's dress. Brooke Lynn went on to say that she thought Tracy was still missing Leela and that she wasn't sure if she should approach Tracy for the dress. Tracy was chastised by Lois, 
who was also at the Quartermain mansion, for having the family's lawyers deliver a prenup to poor Chase. Lois screamed at Tracy to get out of Brooklyn's life. Leela had done everything within her ability to assist Lois in getting married to Ned many years prior, according to Lois. Tracy asserted that the Quartermains were under contract and that a interloper may cause them great harm. When Gregory showed up, he took issue with Tracy calling someone a interloper. Tracy expressed her sincere regret for the remarks she used. Tracy continued by saying that not all marriages lasted and that she had seen too much in her life to not be a realist. When Gregory expressed agreement with Tracy, she was taken aback. Maxie told Lois, who was nearby, that Brooklyn desired to wear Leela's dress. Lois and Maxie argued over whether or not to inquire about Tracy's clothing. Lois discovered Tracy and Gregory together not long after. Gregory was led by Lois into the living area. Tracy was taken aback when Lois revealed that Gregory was bringing Alexis along for the wedding and that Tracy was still weighing her options and fighting them all off. Brooklyn and Chase came back a little while later. After expressing gratitude to Tracy, Chase said that the prenuptial agreement was her attempt to shield her family. As Chase gave Tracy a hug, Tracy expressed how excited she was to have Chase join the Quartermain family. Gregory requested that Tracy have a dance at the wedding just for him. Gregory and Chase walked away. When Tracy and Brooke Lynn had discussed Leela earlier, Tracy acknowledged that she had been evasive. As Tracy talked about Leela, her voice became emotional. I miss my mom every day of my life. I feel a great deal of regret for not accepting her invitation to wear that dress. Thus, I've realized that I was never supposed to wear that dress. It was intended for me to share, Tracy remarked, trying not to cry. After Tracy had gotten the box containing Layla's garment, she gave it to Brooklyn. Brooklyn hugged Tracy, who was ecstatic. Brooklyn and Tracy hugged and cried. Elizabeth convinced Finn that Violet organizing a wedding for herself was typical among kids Violet's age at her apartment. Elizabeth embraced Finn, telling him he would be a wonderful best man at Chase's wedding. Regarding her and Finn's future together, she inquired. Finn inquired as to Elizabeth's thoughts regarding marriage. Elizabeth expressed her preference for the relationship just the way it is. She asked, why rush it? He expressed that feeling. Gregory and Chase came in. For forcing Finn to be his best man earlier, Chase expressed regret. Being Chase's best man would be an honor, according to Finn. Chase and Finn gave each other a cozy hug. Elizabeth grinned and took a seat close by. Spoilers for General Hospital, GH, state that a man going by the name Stone has been creating waves in Port Charles lately. But we all know he's much more than that. Stone Cold, real name Jason Morgan, Steve Burton, seems to be pursuing a grudge. Jason is returning to Port Charles soon to make amends in someone's eyes. However, it's unclear if he's taking on the role out of personal vendetta. However, there's a hint that he has returned home for more than simply retribution. He may be going for Sonny Corinto's, Morris Bernard, to make him pay for what he did to Carly Spencer, Laura Wright, the one woman Jason truly loves about, even though he may also have a grudge against Sonny and the other members of the local mafia ring. Spoilers for General Hospital. The mafia took his life. One should not be surprised if Jason returns looking more like Quartermain than he did when he left, even if he does have a few choice words for Sonny. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.